见证美白新改变。说到的爽肤水啊，就是这个，这个就是卡尼尔美白柔肤液嘛，它多了美白精华，真的又浓又成。然后用了它之后呢，你再用别的保养品，效果真的更好哦，摆得很自然啊。卡尼尔美白柔肤液，卡尼尔。二零零九，我行我秀，全国十六强热力诞生。他们之中，谁会是实力唱将？谁是歌舞双绝？谁将泪洒舞台？谁又将经历重重磨难，最终问鼎冠军？放声歌唱，淬炼梦想，星上电视为您全面呈现。唐白菊清香气息，本来就一脉相连，自然一拍即合。全新黑人茶倍健杭菊龙井牙膏，领剑齿之道发挥更全面，四重剑齿功效，配上菊花的舒心怡神，让你体验自然舒心。黑人茶倍健杭菊龙井牙膏，剑齿配清新，我有我要求。We witnessed a groundbreaking event. Got exclusives with decision makers. And the tradition continues. Join me, Yuan Ming, only on Expert Connection. Eat Dong. Boost your body every day. 恢复自己的理想状态，享受生活的脉动。The Burj Al Arab is the ultimate pleasure palace, laid out like a science fiction fairy tale. Submarines in the restaurants, tennis on the helipad, sharks in the fort, celebrities in the suites. The world's only self-proclaimed seven-star hotel. I think it looks terrible. I need to uh, need uh -huh. to get it fixed quickly. Yeah, but actually, I thought the bandit was a fashion statement as well, but now I see actually a small scar. Yeah, it's yeah, quite yeah. well. Yeah, I got a couple of stitches there. Yeah, is that your first scar? It's not. I've got plenty of them all over my body from wow. years of skateboarding and snowboarding. So you started off skateboarding or snowboarding? Uh, actually, I started off snowboarding. But usually they do it the reverse way, huh? They first learn how to skateboard, then they do snowboarding. That's right. A lot of people do. But uh, my father had taught me how to ski at mm -hmm. a pretty young age. So right. I skied for maybe a couple of years mm -hmm. and decided snowboarding looked a lot cooler, a mm -hmm. lot more fun. Mm -hmm. So I uh, started snowboarding. Yeah. What kind of requirements are required to snowboard? Uh, really, there's not much. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go out for your first time, I think um, You've got to be willing to take a few falls mm -hmm. and maybe have a sore Ouch. butt at the end of the day. Yep. Um, everyone falls the mm -hmm. first time, but um, really there's nothing you need. I mean, you can be in decent physical shape. You mm -hmm. don't have to be in great shape. Whereas mm -hmm. to go like running or you know any other sport, mm -hmm. most other sports, you've got to be in pretty good shape. Uh, I've taught all different ability levels, people, you know, big people, small people, young people, old people, really anyone can do it. You mentioned that you actually were in like Beijing, right? And actually, there are so many, you know, skiing res resorts there in in Beijing. Then why do you move here to Shanghai? That's a good question. Uh -huh. I, I had been in Beijing actually uh, teaching snowboarding at some of the resorts around there, mm -hmm. and uh, helping build a snowboard park mm -hmm. at another resort over there. Mm -hmm. But um, in the in the summer in Beijing, they've already got an indoor ski slope. They already have a big snowboarding scene there. But that doesn't exist yet in Shanghai, so mm -hmm. I think Shanghai is just a lot more interesting for me to be down here. Mm -hmm. um, everything's kind of being started from scratch. Mm -hmm. Most of the people that go out are complete beginners, and you know it's fun to ride with beginners and teach them how to do their first jumps. Mm -hmm. 
that, that opportunity exists more here than it does uh, mm. in Beijing. We know that there are there is an indoor slope here in Shanghai, but are there any you know skiing resorts nearby Shanghai where you can take your students there to to actually practice snowboarding? Well, not near Shanghai, mm -hmm. but um, what we're doing is teaching people here at the indoor slope, mm -hmm. and then during the winter after mm -hmm. people have learned, uh, taking them up to the resorts mm -hmm. in China. There's some great resorts in China. Uh, near Beijing, right. but also further up north in Hebei province and mm -hmm. also way up in Dongbei. Mm. So this is kind of our starting point. Right. Uh, people learn, get the basics down, then once it gets cold enough, we take them up north. Is snowboarding an expensive sport? It's a very expensive sport. And, it is. Um, it is. At mm. this point, it's, um, you know, wherever you go, it's uh, prohibitively expensive, even in the U.S., uh, which is, you know, one downside to snowboarding. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, here when you're just riding at the indoor place, uh, the costs are limited. I mean, you don't have to travel far. Uh -huh. You don't have to go up in the mountains. You don't have to have an SUV to drive around on snow-covered roads. Uh -huh. You can just take the subway down there, which is what I do, and, you know, spin a couple kwai to mm. be snowboarding. You should actually, you know, understand very well the market here in China because you actually work in one of these stores that sells, you know, these equipment. I do, yeah. You know, snowboarding, skateboarding, also surfboard. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, is this market big? It's uh, it's not a huge market mm -hmm. right now, but it's growing very very quickly, mm. and uh, that's one of the exciting things about the market here. Although it's small, although it's a very niche market still, mm -hmm. uh, it's growing by leaps and bounds. Mm. So yeah, it, it is small, but a lot of money is going into it, and mm. a lot of new people are getting into the sport. Mm -hmm. But actually, as you mentioned, there's only one indoor skiing resort here in Shanghai. That's and right. nearby Shanghai, we can't find any actual you know, outdoor skiing resorts. That's right. So that would actually really limit down the people who would you know, visit your store and actually do a purchase. It does. Uh -huh. that, that's true. And that's, uh, that's one of the challenges you face mm -hmm. in selling snowboards in Shanghai. Right. But uh, the interesting thing is there are already skiers and snowboarders here and they're going out and they're skiing and they're snowboarding during the winter. Mm -hmm. But they're going to places like Korea and Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, what we want to do is just make it known that you can do it right here. You can do it here during the summer. Mm -hmm. Like Most people, when they hear that they can snowboard during the summer in Shanghai, they're like, what? Like, is it possible? <laughs> yeah. Like, how is that possible? Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. the, the, mar the market's already here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just trying to get the word out. Right. Well, actually, you can try to attract like younger people, you know, who are more curious or adventurous. Right. But you run into a problem. I don't know if you have ever encountered such a problem where the parents would say, "Hey, you know, I think this sport is too dangerous for their kids." Right. Yeah. We uh, I've encountered that problem quite a bit actually. Mm -hmm. uh, people see snow snowboarding like on TV or they mm -hmm. see bad bad falls mm. in uh, snowboard videos and they think that looks really dangerous like right. why would I want my kid doing that uh -huh. uh, but the thing is when you learn proper safety techniques like even the proper way to fall it's really not that dangerous it's mm. no more dangerous than riding a bicycle in Shanghai mm -hmm. it's probably a lot less dangerous than riding a bicycle in Shanghai mm. so it's it's hard to uh, you know get people to get over that mm -hmm. idea that it's that you know they might get injured or the kid might get injured but to, once you get them out on the slopes and show them, hey, this is snow, it's soft, there's proper ways to fall on it, mm -hmm. then uh, you know, people get over that. Mm. What's the best age to start snowboarding? Really, you can start at any age. Mm -hmm. uh, the best snowboarder in China, uh, and the first Chinese pro, mm -hmm. started when he was almost 30. Mm -hmm. uh, he had been an alpine, you know, alpine skier before that. So you can start when you're, when you're really young. I've, taught, I've given lessons to kids as young as uh, you know, eight or nine years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I've also given lessons to people who are older than 50. Wow. Uh, actually, the oldest person I gave a lesson to this past year was 60 years old. Here in China? So, yep. Wow. That's true. So, uh, you know, you can start at any age. Any age is good. Mm. So, Mateo, what do you hope to achieve? You know, you're here teaching snowboarding for, you know, for quite some time. And what do you hope to see? What do you hope to, you know, get from, you know, the students? Or, you know, what kind of accompl accomplishments are you looking for? Well... I think there's a lot of uh, potential here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think China has shown, especially with this past Olympi Olympics, that mm -hmm. the best athletes in the world are Chinese. And I've seen that just teaching snowboarding mm -hmm. here. And people progress so quickly 
once they get into it. Mm. And for me, that's a good feeling to teach someone, uh, you know, who's a beginner and see them a mm. season later, a few seasons down the line and, you know, have them ride alongside me or even better than me. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, something I hope to accomplish over the long term is just spread the love of the sport. Mm. Uh, it's something I love and enjoy. And so, of course, naturally, I want other people to experience the joy I've been able to experience. Mm. I'm sure there are many like snowboarders or snowboarders to be out there. You know, at least after today's show, they'll be you know interested in the sport. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions? What kind of slopes or you know you know which resorts are a must to visit? Well, I'd say if you're in Shanghai, uh -huh. uh, you should get out to the indoor slope. Mm -hmm. It's a great place to learn. It's not very steep, uh, so you're not going to go out of control too easily or, mm -hmm. you know, hit a tree or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a very forgiving place to learn how to mm -hmm. ride. So that's uh, the place to start. I think that's a great place to start. Then after that, are there any you know, resorts that they should visit? Really? Yeah. After that, uh -huh. uh, Beijing has a Nanshan Resort, mm -hmm. which has one of the best parks we've ever seen, Colorado included, uh, especially built for snowboarding mm -hmm. uh, by an Austrian guy started a company called Mellow Parks and they build great parks mm. in China. So I would say once you're ready to step it up, make it up to the Beijing areas and after that maybe even go up to uh, Dongbei, up to Yabuli or up to, uh, there's a couple of great areas in Hubei province mm. just a few hours north of Beijing. Mm -hmm. So great place to start. Uh, beginners also very important. Mm. Make sure you get the right equipment. Mm. So thank you very much, Matteo, for joining us today. Hey, thank you. Nice being here. We'll take a break right now. We'll be right back with Shanghaipedia. In-depth analysis. Behind the news. Broaden your perspective. Spotlight today is the topic. Just my opinion. Quick search online for 